Beijing is not usually known as a city of love. Surprisingly, Beijing came in fourth in Time Out Magazine's 2015 online poll on the best city in the world for dating. We talked to three expats living in Beijing to find out what the dating scene is like here and what their personal experience with finding love in Beijing is. Thank you. My name is Jordan Brown. I'm a New Zealander. I was in a committed relationship for about the first six months of my time here. Um, after that, I've been pretty free. <laughs> my name is Tyler. I'm originally from Iowa in the United States. Sarah and I met because we, we come from uh, towns that are maybe an hour apart, and in America, that's really not that far. But we didn't know each other in high school. Uh, we barely knew of each other in college, even though we went to the same university. And then we got placed in the same city in China together. It's weird how, uh, even though we came from such a small part of the world, we didn't really get to know each other or fall in love or anything until we were on the other side of the world. My name is Sheena Muju, and I'm from India. I mean, a lot of my friends now use Tinder or these social network apps. You're basically swiping your finger on your iPhone and uh, picking updates. And I'm not sure that works. I'm not sure that works with long term. It might work for a Friday night or a Saturday night date. But for your life, maybe swiping is not the best <laughs> practice. Sex is often a taboo subject in more conservative parts of the world. What is this topic like in China? Talking about sex, I, I think it's it's interesting because like expats when they come over here to China, they almost always have a private space that they can go for sex, whereas uh, that's not really as common, especially if they're younger Chinese. Like if they're in university, like they have eight people in their room, like, and then even once they graduate, like it's. The real estate prices in, in China is, is just ridiculously expensive, especially in Beijing. So you have to live with a roommate, and many people live even in the same room as another person, like have a bunkmate. So I think um, just that privacy aspect, being able to be private and go do what you want to do, versus um, like Chinese, uh, my Chinese friends and colleagues maybe not being able to do that. I would find that super frustrating. I'm, I'm glad I'm in the situation that I'm in, that's for sure. <laughs> the topic of sex is, in my experience, is it's more obvious, like whether the person is going to be eager to do that or not, that's another question, but the topic will usually come up or there'll be a, a certain type of uh, intention that seems quite uh, apparent, rather than some dates back home, in my experience, is like it might not come up. It's not so taboo. It's not as taboo as I was expecting it to be. In Beijing, the Chinese girls are crazy about American guys or people from Europe. So it's very easy for the two of them to date each other. Like it might not even take five minutes for them to hook up with each other. But uh, it's not the same in New York and it's not the same in India. In, in the bars, I've seen a lot of people just hook up in like five minutes and that's, that's the only criteria for some people. So Beijing may be a great, allegedly a great place for dating, but I definitely think expats in general are into hooking up. I think your threshold for, um, you know, hooking up is a lot, maybe is artificially lower just because you're you're inherently a little lonely and and you want someone to spend time with. Whereas <laughs> with Chinese, I've had, I've had buddies who have been like, I will go into a Chinese nightclub, I will look at a Chinese girl, and then I'll just say, nothing, and just go like that. And she'll come over and then go home with me or make out with me at the very least. And I don't know why that happens or, or where that added value of being a foreigner for attracting, you know. Maybe Beijing is a good place for dating or hooking up but as somewhere to settle down and build a family, how does it look? And I respect those people who have either moved here with their families and to pursue like a, a serious 
like long-term career and or those people who you know have gotten married and decided to settle in Beijing instead of you know somewhere else but I don't think that's something for me when I think like family and when I think settling down I think like being able to have a house and 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 being able to raise my kids without worrying about air pollution I fell in love here I mean I'm 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 good on the on the relationship aspect of it. I, I think it's a great place to meet people because it's a dynamic city, and so there are dynamic people here. But it's it's just not a place to to settle down permanently with a family. I think there'd need to be a few factors, such as um, the person who it is, and if there's like if it is the best option. But for me right now, it wouldn't be. So no, not not for me right now. But never say never. I think everyone's just going to have their own adventure.